Hey, hey, and welcome back to Workshop Wednesday. I'm Chelsea Bussemeyer. Thanks for joining me today. And as you can see, I am very much not in my workshop. I'm standing in front of the beautiful Mount Robson in the Rocky Mountains. As you can see, the, the top of the mountain is totally gone in the clouds. As usual, in the background, we've got the highway and I've just taken a pit stop here. My family and I are driving through the Rockies today on uh, a little bit of a trip and I have a hand project I'm working on today. So I thought, you know what? I would share this hand uh, stitching project, this repair with you. It's actually not so much of a repair as I'm really taking this sweater that I love the idea of this sweater, but the big boat neck is just so sloppy. It's literally sliding off me all the time. And so I would really like to make this sweater uh, neck hole just slightly smaller. So this is my idea. I'm gonna take this really narrow ribbon and I've got a big fat needle. Unfortunately, I don't have a darning needle because hey, I just don't darn very often. But my thought is this, since this needle has a very sharp point on it, I don't want it to like pierce the threads in my sweater. Uh, but I thought, you know what? I might be able to use the back end of the needle uh, and just kind of work it through uh, the yarn. So rather than, than piercing the yarn, and that would be much more difficult to like force the rest of the needle and the, the ribbon through, if I just get in between where the uh, yarn is looped together, it will be much easier. So I'll try both. We'll see what works better uh, when we're in the car. And my thought is since this neckband is kind of that, uh, that right left knitting ribbed uh, stitch here, that I'm just gonna go in in the back. I don't really wanna see the ribbon when I'm finished, but I thought with this mixed uh, black and white uh, yarn that if I just kind of weave my needle in between and then back stitch every once in a while, take a loop back and shrink it up so that it's not gonna slide around on the ribbon. I don't wanna just stitch a row of uh, ribbon through the entire neckline. I'm gonna loop it in and kind of lock it as I go and scrunch it up a bit. And then hopefully I can shrink this neckline together so that it still has that boat neck effect, but it's not gonna be as sloppy and sliding off. So we're gonna hop back in the car and uh, get on the road again, and we'll see how this works out.
Okay, so what do you think? I am loving it. I did cinch up the shoulders a little bit more. Um, afterwards, it was still a little bit too loose, but I just uh, pulled that string a little bit tighter right in the shoulder area, brought it in. As you can see, I'm in a new location here. We're actually in the town site of Jasper, and if you look really close right there, you see a little lookout house. You can take a tram, tram right up to the top of that peak there. I'm not exactly sure uh, which mountain that even is. Um, but yeah, this is my sweater. And believe it or not, it only took about a little under 20 minutes to stitch this all the way around. And I've literally been planning on doing this um, for like probably two years now. <laughs> Maybe not quite that long, but it was just driving me crazy every time I wore this sweater. And now uh, it stays put. That feels so good. And I am oh, freezing out here. So I'm going to hop back in the car and wrap up this uh, episode of Workshop Wednesday right here. I hope you enjoyed our little gallivant around and who knows where I will see you from next week. I don't know, we'll see. If you want to uh, stay in touch with me, don't forget to pop down to the description box and uh, join my Facebook group, sign up for my email list and I can let you know about the live classes and other opportunities you can uh, take to uh, sew with me, sew with me live. And I look forward to hearing your comments and we'll see you again next week on Workshop Wednesday. Thanks for watching.